Hey, my name is Brandon from Table of Gaming, and I'm here to run through my experience at Ironweld running Nords using the latest army list that Parabellum has recently upgraded for the game Conquest. At first, I'm going to start by running through my list and why I built it the way I did and what I hope to accomplish with it. And then I'm going to walk through each one of my three games and talk through what went well, what didn't, and things I've learned. So let's jump right in and go through my list. This list is pretty similar to lists I've been playing recently. It's kind of stacked around the Volva and Valkyrie Anvil. Their goal is to be a medium scoring unit, a ton of units, and to be hard to remove. And the way, reason they're hard to remove is the attached Volva and the Valkyries Devout will let me be able to heal uh, them back and bring more stands back. The Valkyries have Blessed, which is used to reroll both attacks or defense. I You can only use it once per turn, so I try to save it for defense to allow them to live a little bit longer and get to where they need to go. The Volva gives my entire army plus one evasion as she is my warlord. This helps shore up the defense of the raiders, which are E1, and the Bosun recently got moved from E2 to E1, so with Volva, they're back up to evasion two, baby. I also use tactics level ones on all my heroes. I just find for the cost of it, turning one fail into success is so powerful over the course of the game, it pays for itself. When we uh, look specifically at the Volva's treasure trove i have the banner coil of serpent the reason i have this is it adds plus one to e evasion for the attached unit so my velks have plus one from coil plus one from volvo ability so it is a e evasion two unit natively then it has defense two plus shield for three from the top so if something hits me with a normal shot 50 50 chance of shrugging it off if there's any armor penetration or cleave i'm able to fall back on e the evasion and still have that that essentially invulnerable type save so it's a very good blocking unit and with six stands it's hard to chew through and it's medium so it holds objective well moving on my next hero or er, character is jarl a uh, jarl's very basic infantry unit uh, i've upgraded with dragon so it has improved clash broken blade for cleave one tactics level one again to help with that resolve and then attached to a five block of raiders um, with the upgrade of shield biter. The reason I go with the shield biter over the standard bearer is I like planning around the static plus two bonus to charge shield biter offers as opposed to rerolling charge rolls. I just find that if I'm taking like a four or five up charge I'm probably doing something I shouldn't and should reconsider because even with three rolls if I miss that I'm going to miss the charge where here I'm guaranteed my five movement plus two, uh, two for the shield biters and minimum roll of one so that means my charge is guaranteed to be eight and it's a lot more predictable to work around that um, this is a scoring unit because the Jarl is medium, so I kind of use this to flank around and get in the enemy's face. Uh, if they take damage on the way there, it's fine because Blood of the Einhard gives them plus one attack um, when they take any damage. And then when they get to half health, since they already have flurry, they get plus two attack per stand. They natively have flurry. That can mean that when they lose half their stands, they're still putting out damage almost as if they're a full unit. So very consistent to get there. And then with a Volvo plus one evasion for all units, their defense or their defensive stat of evasion two is pretty strong, all things considered. In the restricted spot, I have a Mountain Yatnar. They're just a very cheap, effective, heavy monster. The improvement to movement is exciting for me. Both they can get on the on the board quicker um, and get into the battle. Because uh, if you move, move, you pick up two inches. And it's also a little bit more of a consistent charge uh, because you're looking at eight inch minimum now, which is really nice. My last unit is a Conagar. This is probably the t cut and paste copy of most Nords lists that are people being run right now. So I run a Conagar. I equip him with Horn Hajald, a Hagar. And this is whenever you roll a one uh, or the attached regiment rolls a one uh, to attack, they get an additional hit. So I pair this with Bozen, so when I roll my large number of dice, uh, ones punch through armor and get an additional attack, which it is a little spiky, but this can really put a lot of damage down range which I, when I need it. Uh, it's backed up by tactics level one so that I can uh, absorb a little bit more resolve damage by, by making one fail a success. It's attached to a four 
stand strong regiment of bosun. Uh, so this is great because I expect it to kind of stay at home, sit on objectives because the counter makes it count as a scoring unit and put out damage. The reduction of range of two, so it's uh, 14 inches instead of 16, does hurt a little bit, but still the power lies in barrage five, so I feel that this unit will play well. My next unit is a second unit bosun. This is supposed to be uh, played in tandem with the one with the Conagar to kind of be able to pile on extra damage. Either the two bosun can focus fire and remove uh, large threats that are scary, or they can kind of help add ship damage to things that my Velks or raiders are attacking to help put a little bit more damage and hopefully clear them out. In the restricted spots, I have uh, Mountain Yatnar because all the reasons I said before, cheap and effective. And with the point reduction, I was able to pick up C Yatnar. So the C Yatnar did lose Blood of the Einhard, but picked up an extra attack and extra movement. Uh, went down a little bit in points, which is why I was able to put it in this list. And I thought that I, with Fiend Hunter being important for uh, Brutes and other monsters, I figured it would be helpful. And in missions with objectives, I could do uh, a charge into the objective to do damage and then use my free range attack to be able to pile on a little extra damage so I could potentially nuke out an objective in one turn, as well as I could use the same sort of behavior when I go into the enemies where I can move charge, um, do my impact to hits, and then add a little bit more with a free barrage attack. So um, I'm excited this guy a little bit cheaper because it helps him fit in the list. Uh, Icy Otner is just hands down, I think, better. I just didn't have the points to run it. So th this is what I brought. First opponent uh, was a Dwight player. It was a double Drake list running a sorcerer for the Warlord. So that meant... They were running the Creed when they cast spells. They could use, they accumulate tokens they could use to auto-pass things. Um, and they have the traditional Dweg uh, long-range units with good value. They do have a few less stands with the change to points. They increase the points so that, that they, uh, I think on average, most players I talked to at the event lost one or two stands of things and had to adjust artifacts. So I was hopeful that would help put things a little more even, but this was the matchup I was most scared of just because with Valks losing the ability to use Blessed versus range attacks, I was really worried about my delivery to get them into combat. We were playing Forlorn Hope, and the TO did do some modifications so that there was no scoring for destroyed character stands or regiments. Um, looking at first turn, uh, I was only actually able to get one unit on the table which was the bosun with Conagar. My goal was to move them up and have them sit on this objective here so that starting turn two, they could start scoring. I also put them centrally so they could attack whatever was available, as well as they had eyes on this neutral objective so I could put on some more damage. My opponent also only got one unit on. He selected Ballista Warriors, moved them up centrally. He wasn't, since there's no attached character, he didn't really care about the objective and just wanted to put them in range so they could start putting damage on the neutral objective during their turn. I was a little sad because I made none of my reinforcement rolls for Jarl or other Bozen, uh, but he only had one unit on the table, so it kind of worked out not to be so bad. Second turn was a lot better. I was able to auto bring on my Velks because I want Volva to be able to spread the E2 across the, the my army as well as to hold an objective. Uh, in addition, I was lucky enough to make both my ro reinforcement rolls for my second unit bosun and my raiders. So I was able to kind of get a lot of board presence this turn, which was important. My opponent was able to get Fireforge and a unit of warriors and able to grab the objectives. Uh, movement was pretty simple. I just inched my unit up here and then started putting damage out onto the neutral objective uh, to, because later on I wanted to pick that up. My Velks came in off the table and were able to establish a foot on this objective so I was able to score one, score two on the end of first turn. My I didn't really know exactly where he's going to put his drakes, which was a big thing I was scared of. So I tried to keep things a little centrally located and hope I could kind of hold things out until my Yatnars came on the table. Um, I moved my raiders to the left side, toe in just to keep some sort of scoring. I know it wasn't needed because he was so far away, but I figure it's good to outsit. 
on objectives and my thought was I could push these guys throughout the game under the cover of obscuring terrain their light so they can charge through and still get inspired um, and his medium and larger units could not do that uh, the bosun I moved up here mainly because I figured this impassable terrain right here would prevent counter charges as well as I could in the future pivot and I could get good line of fire onto this objective to rain down rain down attacks I think he had similar thoughts to me in a lot of ways he continued moving his uh, bullet stays up and did more damage to this objective so they could work on scoring he brought he auto brought his forge his forge on and then was able to bring them and have them sit up with their character unit on the objective so they're able to score and then he brought his warriors over here and did the same thing uh especially with their 18 inch range and the fact these missions uh, unless you totally take the other objectives you can play a lot more conservative with this if you have the range than if you don't because you can kind of just at least score and hold and keep keep match with your opponent until your bigger units come on the table this is where things get a little bit spicier I auto brought on a C Yatnar because I know he was going to auto bring on his Warlord on a Drake, and I thought Fiend Hunter was able to help here. I was also hoping that I could use the move, move, free range attack to be able to, to finish off the, or put damage onto the neutral objective. Uh, my goal here was to start trying to actually put some pressure on the opponent and be able to set things up so that I have places for my uh, for my two mount Yatnar to show up. So the first thing I did is uh, my opponent actually I think went first here and let me actually try to keep consistent color. My opponent went first here and shot at the neutral objective, destroyed it and then moved forward to here to start trying to put pressure on my items, uh, or my army. Um, I, at this point, kind of realized that he would have to do a lot more damage to the neutral objective than I needed because I already had some damage put on it. So at this point, I moved up my uh, bosun to fully establish and protect my zone, as well as start putting uh, range attacks onto his ballista. As, as you can see, I, I dealt some damage. Um, my next move was I actually moved up and then started pivoting my second unit of bosun so that I could get that the shots into his forge. They couldn't shoot this turn, but that once again, my goal was to set things up for next turn. I felt the impassable train did keep me very protected. On the this is where I think I started to kind of have a hard time figuring out what I should be attacking because he had at this point a lot of heavy units on the table. Um, he was able to just move up the uh, the forge dudes uh, and then pivot them to try to look inward to start hitting my bows in as well as my C Yadnar. And then he brought in another scoring unit from the back to help establish and hold this objective. On the left side, he just further moved up his his warriors, which he would use later on to charge me. Uh, I wasn't super worried about this. I thought they were mainly going to be a speed bump for my Velks because those were my big chunk. And I thought that he was trying to just pin him in my zone for a turn because Velks aren't really super killy. Uh, they're more defensive than they are offensive, so they can kind of get stuck. At this point, he brought in his Drake without a sorcerer and set it on an objective, and then he moved his um, other Drake with a sorcerer up kind of in the center to start doing damage. At this point, I just moved my, my Raiders up slightly, uh, my goal is I didn't want to move him too much because I was worried about taking range shots from here and here, uh, as well as I didn't want to set up too easy of a charge from this unit. Uh, Velks just moved up, established line here, still scoring the objective, 
and uh, this is this worked well for me. So at this point, um, we each scored two objectives for the first for round two and round three. So I was at eight. He was also able to kill the neutral objective for three. So he was at eleven. Um, it sounds like he was separating, but yeah, once again, uh, if I just wanted to dedicate time, I could take out the objective. Uh, the last thing I did is I moved 14 inches onto the table, my C Yatnar, and I made one attack against the neutral objective that's here. I put another point of damage, so at any point that I wanted to spend the action on it, I could do it and then get my points back, or start getting back in the game. My goal was I needed to remove his units. His units were stronger, his units that threatened me. I needed to remove them so I could get, get uh, keep tempo or keep up with this game. This is the turn that I think things went the most wild. So I was able to luckily bring on, I auto-picked a Yar, uh, one of my mountain Yatnars and able to make my second reinforcement roll. So at this point, my entire army was on the table. Uh, I think he brought on his last unit, which was Dragon Slayer. As you see, he has a lot of expensive units, so he didn't have a, like a ton of stuff. It's just they're, they're tanky. Um, at this time, things, I was doing a good job killing things, but I wasn't removing things. And I took a lot more damage with my Velks going in, but I'll talk through that in this game. So um, my Velks at this point were just maintain their position and then shot at the Ballistae. They did a lot of damage, as you see, knocking them down to one stand. Uh, I activated my Mount Yatnar, or sorry, Sea Yatnar, charged the neutral objective to kill it with impact hits, uh, move forward, because I can't charge twice, and then I think I put uh, an extra shot onto this unit with my free attack, um, which is fine. I'm trying to just remove this out just to get things out. Uh, my opponent did a charge with his warriors, a move, and then charge, which is fine uh against my raiders he pinned them in my zone but i had with my mountain yacht or more scoring units so it didn't really super affect me the big thing is is i just need to sequence it so that i didn't take a bunch of burnout damage the valks were taking shots from these two units as well as spell damage so i needed to change that so i made sure to charge them here they did take a lot more damage than I expected, and I set up my stack a little less than I wanted and had my Velk or Sarvova two or three cards later than I should have. So my Velks took a lot more damage, actually ended up breaking. And then when my Volva activated, I couldn't actually heal them because I had to use it to unbreak them. I think this was the beginning of my downfall because without the additional stands, I lost control and wasn't able to keep up, uh, which is, I think, ultimately what hurt me. The other thing I noticed here is uh, I started getting in the routine of using my Mountain Yatnars as scoring units, which is not the best way to use them. And it kind of is making me think maybe I should bring some Fenner or other units that are kind of quick, speedy that I can use and are a little bit cheaper to hold backline objectives. And then if I need to search them around or flank around, I can maybe grab things later game. My unit of bows in here were able to shoot the, the forge here when they were closer. Uh, and do a lot of damage. At this point, he, he he was done with me, and he's just like, I'm gonna move my character and my unit back and just sit on the objective. And then he moved these guys up to establish a line, um, which once again, I'm not super worried about. Um, I did bring my Mount Yatnar up to hold the objective. Uh, and at this point, the Dragon Slayers kind of sat in the back waiting. I think the goal was they wanted, they knew that I was going to charge and and take out the Ballista here or do damage to the Drake and they were just going to come sweep up my Yatnar, which is good and that's a thing they definitely can do. Um, at this point, uh, I took out my objective. We both scored both, so we ended up 15-15. Uh, so right now, yeah, once again, game, game's even, but I think actually this is the turn I lost because I wasn't able to remove any of his units. And I also missed my beat and wasn't able to heal myself. This is a turn that things things went very south for me. Um, so I was a little too scared, I think, of taking burnout damage. So what I did at this point is I used my 
Mount Yodnarn actually charged the unit of warriors that were here. Um, between my charge and attack, I was able to clear them out, which was good. Uh, my, Because I missed the beat last turn, uh, I was able to get basically eaten uh, from the shots from here, as well as the sorcerer's firewall, fireball, and then the ranged attacks of the drake, or sorry, the melee attacks. I only had three stands in a vulva. It wasn't a lot. They were able to pile on the damage here. So once my warlord went down, he got two points for killing my my warrior war. Uh, sorry, warlord, which is rough, as well as my entire army lost the plus one evasion, and that is where everything crumbled very, very, very quickly. Um, uh, and it was hard to come back from that, which I didn't. But we'll get to that later. I was able to. <laughs> He charged from downtown here to do damage to uh, to my Velks, uh, which or sorry, my Bozen, which was fine. Uh, my Bozen did a lot of damage and it was fine. But the big thing that I needed to do is set up a charge with my Yatnar here. He was on the objective. He moved this way. And there was a disagreement on when you declare a charge, is it based on maximum volume? Um, which the answer is, if you can see both sides, you can charge either or. So what I wanted to do is move and then get charged to set up next turn and do impact attacks and set myself up for a little better next turn because of um, we didn't want to slow down the game and it seemed reasonable based on other games that it was based on volume. I was said fine and I just moved myself here to set up a, a charge next turn. Uh, I wanted to shimmy my bosun up here, but this objective or this piece of terrain being impassable and we've treated the train the the base as uh, prevented me from shimmying up. So what I did is just move forward a little bit, put some damage on this unit to set up a, a lateral move. Uh, next turn. The thing that hurt me most is, in addition to losing my <laughs> Valkyrie, uh, the Dragon Slayers uh, and everyone else were... After my Valks died, I moved my Sea Yatnar into attack this guy, and then I was able to get charged by the uh, Dragon Slayers, and they ate me. Um, knew it was going to happen. I got greedy. I tried to pile on extra damage. Probably should have backed off and made them come towards me or maybe move around. Uh, it was rough. Uh, at this point, my goal was just to try to score as much as possible to to make sure I could stay um, competitive for the rest of the, the, the tournament, but I didn't think that I was coming back from this. Um, at the end of this round, because... Oh, the other thing I, I forgot to mention is uh, I didn't actually unbreak these dudes so they activated then they got charged and broken and i was not able to rally them uh which means they didn't count as scoring so this turn went bad for me because i was only score one objective so my score is 20 uh, 17 and dwight player got the two zones as well as killing my warlord and was able to get up to 22. This turn, uh, yeah, once again, it's just the, the bottom of the six was rough because it was just me losing losing troops. Uh, I moved my Yatnar back to hold the objectives. My goal, yet once again, was trying to maximize scoring. Uh, in the previous picture, as you saw, there was uh, my Raiders and Jarl here. Uh, I YOLO'd. I wanted to see if I could kill their Warlord and get back in the score. Uh, I moved and then charged. Um, I was able to put a decent amount of damage on to the Warlord uh, with my impact hits, which is good. But it, without the E2, they weren't able to last. Uh, the other thing is I didn't have enough board presence to bump this Drake off. Since I made a charge and wasn't engaged with him, he did get bumped back. If I had a bigger unit or maybe was formed differently, I could have maybe bumped him off the objective. Wasn't able to happen. Um, I did move my bosun who rallied back here so they could continue scoring the objective uh my yatnar did complete the side charge and then attack and then remove the warriors which is good 
uh, and then I shimmied, as you can see, my bows and up a little bit more. My goal was if I get him in a place, I would like to shoot this guy because that would remove one of the scoring objectives. And I, while behind, was still at a point where I thought maybe it could threaten the the score. When I lost my Raiders, I didn't. I kind of gave up on that dream. Uh, at this point, he looked at just trying to put pressure on my objectives. So as you can see here, he swung his uh, Dragon Slayers towards me with his goal of eating my Mountain Yatner and my Bosun. Um, then he had his uh, his two Drakes kind of got stuck having to kill uh, my Raiders, which they did do. Um, but it kind of kept them on their side of the table. Uh, but you know, once again, he didn't have anywhere to go. He had score advantage. He had priority. Uh, these guys here were just were joined by the character who was over here, um, and then they basically just continued putting dam trying to put damage on my yacht. Or not much. I was able to keep him out of the zone. But you know, once again, as you see here, there wasn't a lot going on for me as he kind of had the range. Uh, my score 21 at this point, his 26, as you see, he's pulling away. And here is the turn that we decided to call it. So at this point, uh, we had a few things going on. Uh, my Raiders were dead. Um, I had a few units and didn't have enough damage on him at the, to do anything. So we, it was right before lunch break and I didn't really have a clear path to victory. So what we did is just talk through the game, uh, which I think worked well. I don't think much big upsets. Um, my thought was that he was gonna continue moving forward to try to put pressure on me. And my goal would be to use my Mount Yatnar to buy me as many rounds of scoring as possible. Um, I would be trying to shimmy these bows in up to try to remove this guy. Um, and he said that based on that, he would look at trying to move his Drake over here. Yeah, you know, once again, he could kill the heck out of this guy, but as long as he's holding one, holding two, uh, he had more score than me and it didn't really make sense for him to potentially endanger his Drake. Um, so we basically talked through and counted as if I was able to successfully hold this one and this one, and he would hold these two. So we'd basically score seven, eight, nine, and 10, each getting the four points. Uh, and that's what we submitted as TO. So yeah, once it was good, um, I felt we played the game to the conclusion, uh, especially without regiments counting or characters counting. There really wasn't a lot of points left on the table. If that was still here, I'd probably played a few more turns just because I know that, especially in events, even if you lost the game, trying to make sure you get an accurate representation accurate representation of victory points is very important um so i lost my first game it was a tough game it was a game that i knew would be hard to play into um i feel that if my volva was uh sequenced better so i got the heal off i could have won and i think if i probably would have uh played a little bit maybe cagier um i might have been able to focus fire and remove some units instead of kind of just do a lot of damage across a lot of different units which i think was my ultimate downfall um, i will say it's very hard to play into uh sorcerer drakes because they have really good spells to throw at you they can double cast uh so they can put two spells on you and they have a nasty range uh and it's hard to get there and them being medium they get onto the table starting round two and they do count as scoring, so they're kind of hard to deal with because they get a good tape, uh, board presence before I can start bringing my Yatnars. So there you go. That's my first game. So th this one was actually one of the harder um, games to play. Um, so this was Divine Conquer, uh, and there was no modifications to the game. Um, the player is playing won the first round, and I lost my first round, as you heard. So this was a rough match because I knew I was already going into a winner. And the, this player is someone I've played against before. They've gone to lots of events. They're a very good player and they play a very powerful Dwag list. And in general, I was hoping not to get Dwag two times in a row. Um, so this was rough because I knew it was going to be a hard game from, from the get-go. Um, and I think in my kind of stress, I kind of missed taking a few pictures because I was intently focused on playing the game. So I do know what I did, but I have missed some of the pictures. So I'll kind of be covering a few rounds in these. Uh, and I apologize for that. So 
First turn, I again brought my Conagar and Bozen onto the table as auto, and I rolled one reinforced roll with Raiders. Um, my goal here was to continue move them in, establish a presence so that I could start scoring. Um, the first turn, I moved these guys a little less so they were back here. Um, and to set up basically myself for scoring. I knew because this one had um, a lot of objectives, uh, six total, that I needed to um, contain my area as well as at least grab one of the central objectives. One thing to note is they're all the smaller objectives. So we only had so many of the correct size zones. So you have to realize these larger zones, we're only counting the inner section because that's what scores the other is just there because that's what we had um so this is something we had to keep reminding yourself as we played the game on the second turn i yet once again i was bringing my velks on and the intent here is that i want them to give out evasion too i moved them here because i knew the uh automata my opponent brought on the table were there just to smash into me so on the first turn the opponent got their fire forged uh, on the table first. So they were able to move, move about here um, as well as they brought their um, for fire forge onto the table, uh, I believe here with a character to establish scoring. Um, so yeah, once again, same plan as I, he knew that he needed to put pressure on objectives and score a lot um, often. Um, the automata are light, so they don't score, but they do prevent scoring, which uh, was impactful. Um, on his second turn, he was able to bring in his sorcerer on a drake. Uh, as a medium, he's able to move, double move it and hold his objective. Um, he double moved, I think these are whole ballistas there. Um, and at this point, I didn't have a ton of great ideas what to do with my second bosun, so I just moved them here to get something on the other side of the table. Um, once again, my goal is to try to have the ability to push through extra damage, um, and I didn't want to bunch up too much on one side of the table. I also knew, based on where the drake was, that's probably where I was going to throw a lot of my Yadnars. Um, the other thing to remember on this mission, unlike the previous one, um, these objectives, if it's on your side of the table, are actually friendly. So my goal is just make sure he doesn't kill it. I can't kill it for objectives. Um, that's probably the better way to do missions because it rewards offensive play instead of just sit back and kill your own objectives. Um, so at the end of this turn, we each scored two, um, two zones. So we got two and then two, but we didn't get enough to get the score three. Um, and he used his second turn just to, to cause we did two here to move here and establish his presence, which would be important next round. So in general, yet once again, it's mainly a setup turn. Things are going fine um, onto the next round. So this turn, I kind of knew what I needed to bring on the table. He had a Drake. I had a unit that could kill Drakes. Uh, so I auto brought my Sea Yatnar and failed both of my um, Mount, y uh, Mount Yatnar coming on the table. Um, the thing that was really important is he had a lot of 18 inch range units that could score. So he was able to play a lot more KG and still be able to throw damage at me as well as score, which ended up being the thing I think long term that ended up killing me. Um, so in the first round, I got beaten the tar out of because my Valks took too much damage on the approach and couldn't use blessed. Um, so I went straight away, took my Valks who were hanging out in this tree charge that move charge and then put them on this objective um i kind of got a little lost in the sauce because i wasn't thinking about aura of death um i do have bless which is how i ate in the future so um i did probably um go a little bit earlier but my goal was i had medium units on there and if i could remove some automata i was able to put damage i was i would be able to start scoring which is good um i was able to i pivoted my bows in here and then because automata are size two, I was able to shoot over and start putting some damage. Rolls weren't great here, so I put on very minimal damage, which uh, is tragic. Uh, on the right side, I moved my bows in with Conagar up a little bit, still staying in the zone and started putting some damage on the Drake. Um, he threw spells at me and did damage, so I did lose two stands and I put very little, if any, damage on him, which was rough. Um, he fought back with the uh, automata with 
blessed. I was able to keep damage to, I think, six, so I lost a stand and a half, which is fine. I can heal that back pretty easily. His fire force pivoted here so they could start shooting at my um, raiders. Uh, my raiders, I didn't move up and pivot. My goal here was put him in a position where I could move charge. Yes, I lose objectives, but if I can kind of play the zones, I cannot take double damage in them with like a two. Um, still make a good charge, which is my long-term plan. Um, Hopeless just moved up. They were going to shoot at me. He brought his dragon slayers in, so I had a clock because I knew if they hit my Yatnars, they'd be dead. Um, and then he reinforced off the side some fire forge to stand on the objectives and start scoring. So um, this was rough because I... Actually, I think I had more units here than he had because uh, I had one, two, three, four, five, six, and I think he just had four. Um, so I did actually score this this turn, so which is good. So I scored two, uh, we each scored six, so it's 10, 10. So this is good. I think things are there. I think uh, maybe I lock things up, but in general, I'm scoring and keeping pace. The subtraction of units from last, <laughs> last uh, picture to this picture, I think tells a a ton of a ton of picked uh, words on what happened to me, which is a lot of bad stuff. I was able to take my Siyatnar, who is here, and then charge it into his warrior. Um, his warrior did concentrate and kill my Bozen and Conagart, which really hurt because that was kind of one of my range damage dealing units. Uh, so my Siyatnar tried to trade him out, get the kill warlord objectives. Um, I charged. He had a, like an inch, a very small amount of hindering terrain, so I didn't get impact hits, which was rough. Did not get the um, charge. I did attack and then throw spear. I didn't kill him. Uh, and at that point, if you remember, he had. Um, I'll change color. He had dragon slayers here and condensed them in and ate my Yatnar. Um, this is one of these things I'm going to talk about in the like combined video with with um, Isaac. I do think that there's some clarity that should be on should be done on charge because I actually believe the right way is I think he would have to move here and then then pivot. I don't think you you would pivot like that, but um, it's not really super clear. And I know it's feedback that on quests or Parabellum has been given. Um, so on this on the left side, I completely crumbled. He got his way. So on the right side, did I do a little bit better? Uh, not really. Uh, bows in here shot damage into the automata. Um, even with blessed and attack, I was not able to kill uh, enough automata. And with the aura of death, uh, I am down to one stand. Because of healing and a bunch of other things, I was able to stay around a lot longer than I should have. And I know that did frustrate him because the uh, automata just wanted to get through. Um, so that was good, but I did lose scoring. Um, this is also a turn where I kind of did something bad. So I was lucky enough to get a really good charge off here. Um, and I was able to actually make an attack, um, which was good. I did count as inspired as a light unit, even though I went through the woods. Um, the problem is, is he activated with his character here. And when he I read my stats, he told me basically, hey, that seems rough. I don't want to duel you. So I thought my Jarl could kill him. And being this was the uh, only unit sitting in the zone, my thought is when I activate with my Jarl, if I could duel and kill him, that I would remove scoring. And since I was already behind so much, I figured it was worth. Um, it wasn't. Uh, I took the duel. I died. I, it was bad. He took, um, I think, three damage. We had two left. But like wasn't worth it. Dueling in general, unless you're super built for it, sucks. Uh, or it's not a valid thing to base a strat on. So I kind of reached for it because at this point I was on my back foot. So I was trying to make up ground. But yeah, it didn't work out at all. He also brought more uh, forge in from the side and was able to just lay shots into my um, Yarl, which is good. Even obscuring it just did a shitload of damage. So it was really rough. Um, and I think... Uh, this is where the like, game was pretty much over, but I continued playing. So Dragon Slayer moved, a second unit of Dragon Slayer moved up. So I scored one, I scored two, and that was it. Where he got one, two, and three here. So this is where the points really, really, really started to lift apart. Uh, so I got 14 for two, he got six. I know it doesn't look that bad, but like uh, my... <laughs> 
He has a lot of board presence at this point. I have nothing, so there's no, there's not much I can do to get back from this. So it, once again, as I said, I got, I got a little lost in the sauce while playing this because of the stressful game, and I didn't take a picture in turn five. So turn five was eventful for me because, as you see, the automata aren't there, but my Velks are. Um, my my Bozen and Velks were able to concentrate fire and sequence correctly to kill the automata, and then my Volva was able to. Um, bring a few stands back. This put me in a nice place because I scored again this turn. The raiders that uh, the raiders that were here uh, basically got killed from a charge, as well as from attack from these guys. They did put a nominal amount of damage here, which is good, uh, but not enough to do anything big. Uh, and then the dragon slayers that were here were able to make a charge. Uh, move charge into my uh, Yatnar and kill it, thereby giving him the zone. Um, at this point, he had such a lead that his whole ballistas didn't even care about the objective and were just shooting into, into my guys because he knew that just killing me off the game was more important. Uh, I am pretty happy because between killing the automaton and getting some lucky heals, um, my Velk stood and they took a charge from the dragon slayers and i had more on the objective so i was able to continue scoring and i had um i i survived so yeah once again it's important to note this is turn five and six for me i forgot to take a picture so end of turn five i had 18 he had 22 so yeah once again doesn't sound bad but he's as you see there's there's nothing left in the tank i i'm kind of stopped at my scoring potential here which is what ends up putting me down um so at the end of turn Six, um, we basically call the game. Um, as you see, he scores uh, two, four, six, uh, two, four, six, and then I think eight for this. So he's outscoring me at a pretty wide margin. And if he can can just reform these guys a little bit better, um, he can take out my warlord. These guys now can come in and either threaten my. Yatnar to clear that off or throw damage into these two. So um, this is a very hard mission to kind of take any large lessons to. Well, I probably should have been a little bit smarter sequencing against Automata. I needed to stop them from hitting my back line and I needed to exert pressure on a middle objective. So I did that. Um, but I don't know what to do besides just play a different list. Like, I don't think I used any of my units super incorrectly. Um, the dice, I mean, dice are what they are, and, and I, I think that I got some good and some bad rolls, so I think that kind of evened out. Um, it's just very hard to have a double casting sorcerer with flame well, fireball, and range attacks coming at medium, being able to hold objectives and throw a lot of damage onto my guys and just eat my sea yachtner between that and the um, dragon slayers. So I don't really have a lot of lessons learned from here um, at like the first game. Like the first game I had some bad sequences, things were broken, didn't score. I should have been more aggressive with Volva healing. Um, I didn't. This one, I, I don't really see any huge oversights. Um, obviously, next time, make sure I take all the pictures. Um, but that was how I lost my second round. Um, of note, um, this player did go on to win the entire event. So like, yeah, they're a good player. Uh, it's hard to play against good players. I end up coming in six with, uh, I feel good for um, out of, I think 12 person. I came in the middle of the pack after losing two games, which uh, meant I, even though I lost, I kept good VP and had good strength of schedule. So, you know, I guess that's cool. So this is um, a very happy matchup. So I was actually playing one of my good friends, Fisticles. He's on the no the Discord. He's a fellow Nords player, and he's a very good uh, opponent to play against as he's kind of helped me talk through some of my lists. So I was excited to play this because um, I doubled down on my sort of archetype, which is a big block of Valks for this, and then use extra points to get a C. Yatnar. He kind of went in an entirely different way and ran a very different list utilizing a shaman as his warlord so i was excited to see how that worked in practice for this mission we played head to head um, with some pen, um, changes where killing a regiment is only one point instead of two and no points for killing characters just warlords so you know once again i played a nord list so um i know a lot about what was going on and and the strat they had um first turn um 
my main goal here was to try the only objective that you can natively score uh, on your side of the table or close to your side of the table was grab the uh, big objective to the left. So here, um, these two objectives, you could only score if you got to your opponent. So my goal was basically to prevent him from grabbing mine and put pressure on his, as well as play the longer game to hold the left objective. Um, and not expose my units that don't need to be because objectives, uh, you gain points for killing regiments. So I wanted to be very cagey here. Um, so first turn, I brought my Conagar up. I didn't want him to score. I want him to put out points. So I put him here. The thought is this piece of impassable terrain and this guy here should be able to protect me from long bomb charges as well as I can still get most of my attacks off. Uh, my goal here is I want to move my Jarl and Raiders up because I want them to slowly make their way across and then threaten the opponent's objective uh, and have the Jarl's medium count as well as they can go through the objective, the, the terrain here and here as light units and still get inspired. So I wasn't too worried too much about this. Uh, he, on the other hand, uh, Van Garden flanked up this blooded with stalkers so he could start putting out 18 inch range, which was a good move as well as he had an exact same Conagar and Bozen. Um, Vanguard helped him a lot throughout the game, um, but his goal was to play more more forward and grab the objective earlier, where I was trying to play to kill things and then take things over the long game. So that was the first turn. Second turn, uh, the opponent was able to bring in a set of uh, Huskarls here uh, with Vanguard and place him up to protect on the objective. They were also able to vanguard in a set of Ugers, uh, which they wanted to use to help threaten the middle. Uh, I've got auto brought my Velks uh, because I want the E2, as well as they were the anvil that I wanted to contest the large objective, uh, as well as I brought in another set of Bozen. I kept them more centrally located this time because yet once again, it was killing as a secondary objective and I want to be able to, if I needed to put the gas on one target. Um, uh, he also brought on, but did not vanguard, a unit of raiders with the shaman. That was his warlord, so he kind of kept them back. I knew if I could get him, it would be points. Uh, the Bozen and Conagar did move up to grab the objective for scoring purposes, as well as start putting damage on my Conagar and Bozen. His stalkers were able to join in this fight. So while they didn't do a ton of damage, because stalkers don't, the fact that they had two units shooting to my one was uh, very was hurtful to me uh did a lot it, it removed a stand at this or didn't put points on so this is something that i was kind of worried about long term um when it came down to my goal it was i double moved to set my valks up my goal next turn was to start contesting the objective move up my bows in here so they could start threatening either this direction or this direction wherever needed um, and yet once again, further reinforce with my um, raiders so that I could put myself in a position to move charge or hopefully just get a long bomb charge off and then do damage. Uh, at the end of this turn, I did not score the left side. I did not kill things. So opponent got three, I got zero. Um, board state is still good. I know I can come back from this. This was a good turn. Um, I brought in my Mountain Yotnar's auto and made one extra save and brought in a second Mountain Yotnar. I kept my C off board because I know he had both ice and C and I wanted to try to, um, and I believe the mountain. So I wanted to keep my C Yotnar available to reinforce where Fiend Hunter would be most valuable. Um, and also, as you see, I have a lot of stuff on the left side. So I was kind of knew I'd have to go heavy there and wanted to keep the option to have my C Yotnar go uh, on the right side if needed. He was able to bring in his uh, Ice Yotnar, which is the most powerful unit that Nords have. So I know I need to be careful playing into him. Um, but overall, I kind of I kind of liked my odds with what was on the table. I basically pivoted my bows in here to establish line and then try to put damage into his bows in. I knew it was going to be a shootout. I was trying to strike quick, strike fast, and take most of the damage that I was getting away. Um, I did move up my Velks onto the objective, which was good, but um, his Ugers did move and then charge me here, uh, which is what they wanted to do, they wanted to keep me off the objective. They have more scoring potential, I believe, at this point, so I didn't get it. Um, so it was a valid move from his end. Um, he moved his guys back because he actually didn't want to deal with the move charge from 
uh, these guys here, as well as he didn't want to get shot at here, um, which is fine. Uh, I was able to actually, I think, start putting some damage on this unit after moving forward, which is his warlord. So that worked long term for me. Um, as much as I didn't want to do it, I ended up moving one ice uh, sub mountain Yatnar onto this piece of terrain. I do know that this would ha this prevents me from getting a move charge with impact hits or inspire. Um, which I hate, but my goal was mainly to either tie up the bows in or tie up the stalkers here because it would prevent them to from doing range damage. So the goal wasn't as much as first turn damage, but more lockdown items. Uh, on this side, I moved up my mountain Yotnar because they were either going to move in and clear out the Ugers or set up um, some sort of defense against the Sea Yotnar. Uh, overall, yeah, once again, uh, I'm losing on board, but I feel the board state is fine for me. So the opponent scored the left objective. So it's uh, opponent six, me zero. So turn four, um, things were going pretty well for me here. Uh, between my activation uh, for the Valks, I was able to kill out the Ugers and I did take some damage, um, but I was still stable at three stands uh, with a Volva. Uh, I made the charge here with my Mount Yatnar. Yeah, once again, I moved charge, did not get impact hits. Goal here was to tie up the enemy so that they couldn't keep shooting at me. At this point, uh, we got in a nice duel and we each had a Conagar and one additional Bozen stand. So I knew, knew that next turn I needed to activate my Conagar quick and move him into the healthy uh, Bozen unit so I could continue using my uh, Horn of Hajald. Um, I did go for a move and then charge against the Huskarls, did I think one stand of damage, and then he ate me and then reformed here, which like um, probably fed him a unit, probably not the smartest thing long term, but um, I need I felt I needed to put pressure. My Bozen did move up and then put more damage onto his Warlord unit. Uh, as you can see here, he has one standard raiders and his character. So it is within range of getting killed, which puts me up point of vantage uh, and helps just reduce unit activation. So I think that was a smart move. Um, I did move my Yatnar up defensively so that the C Yatnar, or sorry, the mountain Yatnar on his side, he had to make choices. He had to decide, do I want to go in and attack the Valks? I would prefer him not to do this because I want to heal them back up. Or does he go for my 170 point big boy monster and try to nuke it out? Uh, so that was my thinking moving him here like this. My C Yatnar, my goal was move, move, get on the objective so that he don't, can't just step on it um, and as well set myself up for future turns. Um, yeah, once again here, um, I killed the Yugar at one point. He killed a f uh, few things and scored. Uh, he killed my Yarl, sorry, Raiders, and he scored the object on the left. So now it's 10 1. He wins, or he leads. Yeah, once again, it looks bad on paper. Uh, the score is fine. Being down 10, I can get this back. I think that's one thing that's really funny about this game is if you just looked at the score, I, it looks like I was trailing. I had no way of winning. Where if you looked at the previous two games, you'd be like, well, you're up, keeping up in score. You still have. Uh, threat when I had no board presence. So this is kind of the exact opposite of those games. So he went first and he took his Mount, uh, C Yatnar, charged my Mount Yatnar and ate it for lunch between move, uh, the, ch the charge and the um, and the attack. Um, oh, it's important thing to important to talk about last turn. Uh, he actually tried to make an attempt to charge my Velks and with uncontrollable he needed, I think, a five or four. He rolled two ones, even though he can re-roll. So he just stumbled onto the objective for scoring purposes. Um, that was very impactful if he got that charge. Um, he could have moved charge. He didn't want to. Um, I that would be my recommendation after the game. If you need to get a charge, move charge. Don't. I don't like re relying on large charges. So this turn, he had full control and he charged my Yatnar and ate it, um, which is fine. I kind of knew that. Um, he Vanguard moved his um, Mount Yatnar there and was able to charge my Sea Yatnar here with my Huskarls and start putting up damage. The Mount Yatnar that was stationed here actually got eight between the Stalkers, the Blooded, and the Conagar and Bozen, which I did not expect. 
but sometimes that's how things work. On my side, I was able to side charge into with the Valks and put a good amount of damage on the Sea Yatnar. Uh, and I was able to use this unit to take out his Warlord and Raiders, which put me up quite a lot of points, um, as well as I was able to continue putting on some more damage here. Um, so this turn, it kind of like, yet once again, I think looks bad. I had a lot of tools up my sleeve. Um, I think losing the Mountain Yatnar is a thing that I didn't expect to have happen, but sometimes that's how things work. Um, um, but I still, I have a better scoring situation, which is I'm scoring the left objective. I've taken out the Warlord for, I think, two points and one point for the Raiders they're attached to. So at this point, I kind of um, jump back in and I'm up to seven points because I score six for three for the objective, two for Warlord, one for the Raiders. Um, and he gets up to 13 for killing my Mountain Yatnar. Um, and my C Yatnar. And I think there's something else he killed that I'm, I can't seem to remember at the moment, but still, yeah, you know, once again, I'm closing the gaps. It's, it's looking better for me. The last turn, I actually did not take a picture, um, because a lot of unfortunate situations, I kind of thrashed my friend and I didn't want to take a picture because I felt like I was rubbing it in. Um, he actually got the activation and he attacked into my Valkyries. Um, I think he ended up getting eight hits through. Um, cleave three because of Ice Yatnar and I use Blessed. Um, so I'm on my Evasion two from Coil and Volva ability and um, I I make them all with Blessed. So I think I rolled four and then rolled the other four into ones and twos. Very unlikely, totally changed the dynamic of the game. Um, I was then able to activate with these Bozen with the Conagar who escorted into them and attack into the Mount Yatnar. Um, I spiked really well and got a lot of ones, so I got a lot of extra hits and I ended up doing all but two damage to the Mount Yatnar. So now it came to who sequenced things better and could go. Um, I was lucky because I was able to then go with my C Yatnar. I was able to inspire and clash and completely kill this Huskarl unit, so I was up on points. And then I still had my 8-inch attack, which this guy was in range of with Fiend Hunter, and was able to do a free range attack and kill the Yatnar. So at this point, uh, I've activated two units. I've killed the Huskarls. I've killed the Mountain Yatnar. He attempted to do damage to my Valks and did none. Um, and then at this point, he, I think he conceded the game. We might, I might have killed his Ice Yatnar. Um, I forgot. Uh, but he conceded the game because I, at this point, had a lot of scoring units on the table. I removed almost all of his scoring units. He just had Stalker with a Blooded and then the, uh, one standard Conagar with Bozen. So I kind of had the game. Um, I do feel bad because I know that he's been having not a lot of fun with Nords and the way the list has been kind of going. Um, I think he's going to be playing Old, D Old Dominion going forward, which I think is a good change of pace when you're kind of getting sick uh, of the army you play. Playing something else uh, that's a little different is a nice way to look at the game. Um, the thing here is... I feel I actually made more mistakes in this game than I did in previous games, but because playing into Dweg is so oppressive, making one or two errors, I feel um, Dweg have the tool to punish you. If you move a little too close, they're gonna throw a bunch of spells and firewalls and stuff and destroy you. If you let them get too many casts off, they have auto saves that they can use to prevent your big spike assaults. Um, where here, I think that like, I probably shouldn't have fed him the, the Raiders, um, but even still losing that, I still had tools to kind of come back and then ultimately win the game. Um, I do think I was lucky, like, getting eight attacks and then making everything on a two or less, even with rerolls, is very unlikely. Uh, and I did make some of the big charges that I wanted to, and then the huge spike out at the end where my bosun did all but two damage, so they did 12 damage or whatnot to the, mount, to the opponent's mount yonder is just crazy. So those are my thoughts on this game. Uh, as always, happy to hear from you. If you uh, have any additional questions or comments about how we put this together, if you have thoughts or opinions on mistakes I may have made throughout the game or ways of making battle check, uh, reports better, please let me know. As always, leave comments and follow us, and then uh, Isaac and I will be having uh, 
another conversation where we kind of talk about the state of the game in Iron Weld in a more general sense. As always, thanks for watching, uh, and we'll catch you next time.